so let's say we want to um, take this a bit further. Turn off the cordon tool here. They also have to be on the same grid points, <coughs> or at least adjacent grid points. So as you can see, everything's kind of pretty much really messed up as far as not being uh, accurately sewn together. So we select everything again, and so, and automatically it will hook everything up together. And so now you have a large patch of rocky uh, or bumpy dirt-covered rock terrain. That's just kind of a quick way you can uh, make large sections of um, ground in a map, and then you just go through and modify it as you want to. Um, if you no longer want to use, um, no longer want the displacement to be there, uh, you can just use the destroy tool to um, return it back to its original shape as far as the brush is concerned. And here we have our uh, all of our uh, new brushes and stuff that we copied while there were displacements. And now uh, let's get to the subdivision tool. The important thing to remember about the subdivision tool is that it requires you to have a um, to have a, one to have adjacent um, uh, displacements, and also um, if you're going to be creating a sphere with it, and not a a uh, brush sphere, but a perfect sphere, um, you need to have a perfectly square brush to start with. But uh, let's go ahead and try it and see what happens when we use it on this. As you can see, nothing happens because it's a flat surface. <coughs> the, what the subdivision tool does is, uh, is essentially it um, rounds off edges. So if we were to create a new uh, brush here that goes uh, down the side of one of these... Uh, sides here. Let's go ahead and put it right on the edge. And move this down. Alright, go ahead and create it. Then we want to get the Inside here, displacement, create, power of three. Um, then we're going to sew it to this, these uh, edges here. Oh wait, that's right, it won't work that way. Because you have to have one for each of these, so we'll get to use another tool now, the cutting tool. Um, what the cutting tool does is it allows you to break brushes up into pieces. You can cut them and delete the half that you don't want using Shift X to select that half, or you can keep everything like this. First, let's go ahead and use the Vertex tool. The ver Vertex editor is really uh, one of the more complex features of Hammer, and a lot of people kind of shy away from it at first. Um, but it really allows you to have a much greater level of control of your uh, objects. Um, for instance, if you've used the cutting tool to cut something in a diagonal manner, um, just uh, resizing it with the handles here will actually cause that cut to go out of alignment or to stretch. So you have to, if you want to elong elongate a brush that you've actually cut, you need to use the vertex editor to select the vertexes you want to move and then move them. And that will only move those vertexes and not everything uh, together. <coughs> uh, but now that we got that done, let's go back over here. We're just going to go ahead and cut this along each of these lines. So essentially we're going to be cutting it up so that we can use the displacement tool properly. And as you can as you notice we can uh, cut displacements too. Damn. I was off center on that cut. Alright. Another uh, point of advice is never to use the carve tool. Um, in some cases you can use it 
Um, like if you want to create an arch or something but don't want to use the arch tool or it's a specific kind of arch you're looking for, you could use it. Uh, I'd recommend against it just because it creates a bunch of um, clips that you have to then put into a um, funk detail so they don't screw up the uh, visual uh, vivis or uh, the um, performance of the uh, map. So we're just going to go ahead and sew those together now as you see it works. You can see how it wouldn't work before. Um, but now what we want to do is we don't want this to be just a flat edge like this. We want to go ahead and uh, round it off. So we will do subdivide. And as you see now it's kind of rounded off but on the edges it's not. But the other uh, other sections except for the extreme edges are rounded off there. Um, now if you want to create a sphere a perfect sphere. You have to get a brush that is perfectly uh, round. Let's see, dev. Actually, let's uh, use uh, this gooing glass or gooing yeah gooing glass thing here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and. Create it now. Um, you want to make sure that every uh, side of this is perfectly uh, squared off. So 850. All right, then uh, create. And then what we want to do now is you want to leave the entire thing selected. Um, just because we're going to be using the entire um, um, damn, entire uh, block for this. And you want to go to uh, back over to here. Displacement, create, power of three. And then hit subdivide. And depending on how strong your computer is, it could take a while for it to uh, work. And here you see we have a perfect sphere now. Material fit. Um, there are other things you can do with it too. Um, oops, why? For example, if you want to create kind of a column-like uh, object, then um, let's choose a different texture. Then you would just select um, the outer sections of it. So, for example, uh, hide mask, mask. So now you have the uh, four sides here. And just do uh, subdivide. And it creates kind of like a column uh, effect here. And that's if you want like a more natural looking column than uh, what you can get with a uh, cylinder. And again, you can also modify it as you want to. Another important thing is that when you destroy something, you need to make sure you have every um, side of the displacement selected. Or destroy every side so you can return it to the uh, undisplacemented form. Or uh, non displacement form. Um, you also have uh, the decal tool. 
and uh, texturing tool. Uh, decals allow you to apply decals to surfaces. Uh, and this just allows you to apply um, the current texture you have selected as a decal to a uh, surface. Um, I don't know. You don't really need to go over a lot of what this stuff is. Um, I haven't even really messed with a lot of these. I don't really know what they all do. Uh, I know these two are texture locking, so that when you scale things, the texture stays where it's supposed to. But like this one, uh, toggle face alignment, um, and all these other ones, I'm not really sure what they do. Um, this allows you to see uh, a helper... Um, uh, balls on some uh, entities like doors and stuff like that. And this um, lets you toggle on or off models in the 2D view. Uh, this you can um, fade models out with that. Uh, then you have uh, show no draw surfaces. So if I, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to show the no draw surfaces, you just select that tool and uh, it hides any surfaces that are no drawed. So for instance, as you can see that surface is gone now. And this one, let's see, this one uh, turns off showing the detail inside of the um, 2D views. <laughs> or maybe entirely, I'm not sure. This button here allows you to compile the map. And uh, there's two modes. There's there's uh, the advanced mode and also then just the normal mode. I tend to use the uh, expert mode just because um, I can do a uh, full compile while turning a few th changing a few things uh, where they're not needed. But um, you can also do this one. Uh, right now I have it set up for just running the BSP, uh, so I can check for leaks in case uh, before I actually make the um, do the uh, map for real, just so that I can fix any leaks before uh, spending all the time to actually fully compile the map. <coughs> That's about uh, what all hammer is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some work now. Um, as you notice over here, it's going to be similar to this, but I haven't gotten all the stuff in yet. Um, but uh, I'm not going to do any work on this map, because I've been showing it to you all this time. We're going to switch over to a different map. Uh, yes. Open. Test maps. Let's see. In progress, latest. Uh, chapter one, five, three, open. All right, so here's a map you're probably familiar with, and I and as you as I noticed, mentioned earlier about the uh, creating the spiral stairways, I did that using the arch tool with these stair uh, stairwells here. Um, but as you can see, we have this map here. Um, if you actually run the map, you would find that um, this uh, particular model doesn't work correctly while it's moving around. Essentially, this is a prop physics, I think, or dynamic, that's parented to a funk train track uh, to move it around this as to uh, kind of uh, present the idea that this is a shell manufacturing facility, which it is. Um, but it'll go around on this track, and there'll be several of them that do uh, go around on here. Um, but at the moment, it actually doesn't um, work correctly for some reason. Funk train tracks are really uh, kind of a pain in the ass to deal with sometimes. Um, but what I'm going to be working on right now is actually creating the uh, sections that raise up out of the floor here. Um, you actually haven't seen this uh, on any of the screenshots yet, 
the inside of here with the uh, caution markers. What's going to happen is, though, is that when you push a uh, button, I actually have it over here, whenever you uh, interact with this here, um, you're going to create... Um, well, actually, what's going to happen is you're going to have a key card that you're going to put in here. And then uh, it's going to open up a section of wall somewhere that'll bring out a um, <clears throat> panel that you interact with to actually cause this to happen. But these are going to be on a funk train track. Uh, they're going to go down and move out. And then a uh, display thing is going to rise up from uh, a pit underneath them. And we're going to go ahead and create the pit and uh, the eventing for that now. So essentially what we want to do is, is um, create first, create these into um, funk brushes. To do that you can just do control T or you can uh, use the um, entity tool I think. Or I guess no. Um, where is it? Map. It's like turn to, uh, let me see, uh, tie to entity, yeah. So you can either use this or control T. I choose to do the um, Oops. Do the uh, shortcut. So now we just want to create a funk brush out of this. So we have a name and a parent. We want to give it a name of, um, let's say, uh, This is going to be the armory here, so armory uh, floor, we'll say um, bottom left, and apply. And we'll call this one armory floor, and actually what you can also do is just um, let's see, there was a way to, okay, I think copy them paste, yeah, and just change that to right, apply. All right, so we have our uh, objects here, and they're now uh, turned into br funk brush objects instead of just uh, solids. We want to create a uh, new uh, brush, I think, let me see. Or no, we want to create a track train. Now I was right, uh, the funk track train I think has to be a object that you create, a brush object. Let me see. Uh, path track. I think it's on the inside of this, maybe. Parent. I guess I actually didn't put it on there. Maybe I deleted it because I was working on it. Anyway, somewhere around here. I'm not sure where it's at. Is a path track. I guess I'll just go ahead and make one over here. Instead of trying to find that one. So I just use uh, no draw for that though, because we don't want to actually see it. Uh, create. Let's see. Just a really small kind of object. I usually go uh, eight by eight. And do the uh, tie to f tie to entity, then track train, and we'll call this. Um, you can also tie these to a parent as well, so you could uh, move it with another track train if you wanted to. But that kind of defeats the purpose of using one of these. And we're gonna go ahead and call it um, Armory TT 
bottom. Apply. Um, we're also going to uh, create the. Let's see, where is it? Somewhere on here there is a first stop target. And we're going to say. <coughs> Um, what's called armory underscore path track or armory bottom path track one apply. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to oops and there's that uh, helper icon again. So you can turn that off so you don't see this here. But it also takes off the origin marker on these. So I kind of want to just get this um, centered here as close as possible. Um, now we're going to lower it down. So that's essentially right in the middle of these. Next, we want to um, actually let's raise it up for a second so we can work with it here. Next, we want to parent these to that. So Alt Enter to open up the properties, and Parent, and we'll use the uh, eyedropper here to select it. All right. So now, essentially, what's going to happen is that wherever this moves to, these are going to follow it. <coughs> so um, these now are parented to this, and uh, we'll follow it wherever it goes once it starts moving. Uh, apply. We're going to say no X rotation, no user control, uh, fixed orientation. Or actually, we want to do two of these. My mistake. We want to do one for this side and one for that side. You can also uh, duplicate entities the same way you can duplicate brushes by um, shift, uh, left click, and drag. Change this to bottom. Or let's change it to armory bottom track train two. It's a better uh, uh, one underscore one, or rather two under two underscore one. And we'll change this one to one underscore one. Then we'll need to uh, edit the um, parenting on this. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Screwed that one over. Um, And what the red means is that it cannot find the entity or the entity name that it's um, that's been entered. Is what that means. And when you see it bold and bold, that means that there are uh, more than one entity with that name, which you might want in some cases. Uh, so we've got our two uh, track trains here. They're about centered. And uh, then what we want to do is to create the path tracks, which is an entity. So uh, path, oops, path track. And I'm going to go ahead and name those. Uh, name, let's see, armory. 
underscore b underscore pt1 underscore 1. Or maybe it was 1 dash 1. If it doesn't, we'll change it to 1 dash 1 over in the uh, marker there, or the track train. Uh, copy, paste, 2 dash 1. Next target stop. Two dash two, and one dash two. All right, so now we can uh, work on these here. So I want to make sure that this one is um, in the center here of this. Then we want to move it down uh, about the same distance. And then we want to move it over this way. So essentially, in theory, what this will do is it'll bring this um, brush downward and then move it over. Actually, we should go a little bit more down just so it's not uh, showing through the through this or anything like that. Or it doesn't appear to be going into this uh, brush, but uh, around it. Now that should be fine. <coughs> as long as it uh, works correctly. Uh, what we need to do now is make sure that yes, okay, good. And one thing that's good and that's a good thing about Hammer is that once you indicate the name and the next stop on the first uh, path, type of uh, path entity, it will actually auto-populate uh, each one after that with the next uh, one and rename the next path to uh, whatever the next sequential path would be. So we gotta do the same thing for the other side now. Oops, let's make sure we actually have these uh, centered first. Or rather, centered on the uh, track train. Okay, bring it down. So how far is this? between edges here. Oops. Hundred and twenty five units, hundred and twenty six units. Alright, so I'm gonna try and get that same uh distance here. So to the one where it's at there. All right. So essentially on that green line. Okay. And should be fine. Uh, so now essentially what happened is when these uh, track trains are triggered, they'll move these uh, sections. down and then over in their perspective directions, which will expose the uh, pit area here, <coughs> which I'm going to create now. So the pit has to extend out to at least where these um, uh, pieces will stop at, otherwise they'll, uh, they'll look kind of weird. Try to keep everything to look so it looks um, proper. In other words, the things aren't going through uh, other pe other walls or brushes or uh, doors or something when they're moving. Like if you go watch um, a Mass Effect 3 walkthrough and watch the doors open and close on the Normandy, or I think on any of them on the Mass Effect games, you'll notice that um, the the door brushes actually go through a solid wall instead of into a space. 
um, in between the walls. And I think that's actually sloppy mapping. You should have a, um, I guess it's just Z to lock it into um, actual uh, mouse-based viewing, or mouse-based camera movement. Um, actual space that these things go into, instead of just having to go into something solid. Um, and when something does go into something solid, like a door opening or something like that, and I see that that's, that, I consider that to be sloppy mapping. There's not really any reason for it. But anyway, um, so we need to make the, uh, actual area down here. So I'm going to go ahead and use no draw for right now. And, uh, let's see, 16 units for a wall. I actually want to make this a little bit, uh, larger. So if this is the center here, it's going to be the center over here. So, um, there's going to be this much distance between here and here, so we'll need to move this out a bit more. I think right to there will be fine. But I want this to be a little bit larger. <coughs> than uh, these edges are here. Not too much larger. Alright, and we'll just go ahead and move this down a bit. Alright, we'll go ahead and copy-paste this over to here. Make sure these line up. Then I'll create the uh, walls next. Come on. Damn. Let's go ahead and rotate it then. Actually, I'll use the rotate tool. Uh, Z by 90. Let's go ahead and do the inside here. I actually go on the outside. Now let's go ahead and do it right up against it. It'll be better that way. Go ahead and extend this all the way down. Then move this to the other side. Okay, now we need to actually uh, also enclose this top section here. <coughs> so I'm just going to uh, take this one. Copy it again, and rotate it this time by X, I think. No, Y. And then we'll just uh, move this up on top here. That was a little off with this one. I crap. Actually, yeah, no, I don't actually need to do it over there, do I? No, because it already has the floor there. Okay, so. Uh, then we need to do the actual floor for this, though. And this is going to kind of be where it's interesting, because there's going to be a floor in here that's going to be the false floor that raises up, and then the floor underneath it to close it off. So we'll actually need to... Um, put this here just to close off this area but then create another one uh, 
with the same size as this here. <coughs> so I'm just going to copy this one up. One of the other reasons I'm doing this, rather other than just um, to, to uh, kind of have it be instructional, is to show my process and uh, to allow for why the way I do mapping takes so damn long to finish. Uh, why it takes so damn long for me to finish maps for. Um, besides the fact that I don't really have too much time to spend on mapping, just my general process as far as why I can't put maps out every month or something. Uh, next we want to um, I guess we'll leave it at 16. We just want to uh, bring it up the full distance. So now what we want to do is um, also create this into, well we want to texture it first I suppose. So uh, we're going to leave everything except the, the top face um, No draw because we won't see any other parts of it. Um, we want to make sure that this textured face will match up with this, these faces once it uh, is up here. So we'll do the alt click, alt right click. Um, next, we want to change this into a brush entity <coughs> or a funk, de uh, funk brush because this is going to be moving too. Uh, we'll call this. Uh, Armory B M floor for moving floor. Apply. Um, and its parents going to be uh, Armory underscore B underscore track train three. Or we'll say four. No, I guess, yeah, three will do. We'll do three. So it'll be track train three of this section, of this bottom section. Uh, go to flags, ignore, da, 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 down, all right, apply. Solidity, uh, always solid. Let's make sure we also set these to always solid as well. Alright, so we need another track train. Uh, we'll just go ahead and copy this one down. And another, uh, whoops. Another uh, path track section. So this one's going to be bottom path track 3-1. Apply. Uh, parent will be... this one. And three, two. All right, and uh, that was almost a disaster. <laughs> 113 megabytes left. Literally, maybe a second or two left of footage. But uh, crisis averted for the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with this. So what we want to do is I want to create kind of something that looks um interesting. <clears throat> I just don't have like a block like this that's crappy looking. <clears throat> I want it to be kind of have a particular shape. Uh, maybe something similar to what you see in uh, uh, the shelves used in uh, Nova Prospect Zero. But a little more uh, refined. Maybe a little more cool looking.
Actually, let's go ahead and select this. What else do we select by doing that? I know there's something else because it's... Oh, here. Okay. Uh, but not this. So we're actually going to move this down a bit. Alright, we'll readjust this now. Okay, so first thing you want to do is to cut it, surprisingly. And we're going to cut it here and make our first changes with the vertex editor. First thing I want to do is to move this um, set of points upward. And then uh, we'll go back to the cutting tool. I'm going to do another set of cuts here. Oops. About the same distance away. Probably have to go in and uh, fine tune those later on. Uh, and then we'll also move those up as well. So it doesn't really look like much yet. Uh, next thing we're going to do is to. Let's go ahead and make a few more cuts here. And we'll deal with that top section later. Uh, let's go ahead and grab everything again. Alright, so now... Bring this down. Four units, not three. All right, so we've got that now. Um, let's see. Let's make another few cuts. I literally have no idea what I'm, where I'm going with this. I'm just um, making cuts as I envision stuff here. So just bear with me for a moment. So two, four, five, six, four. So uh, that would be uh, nine units. So let's see, four. Yes. Okay. Hmm.
makes it a little too cliched. <coughs> That looks better. I also want to do those, um, just noticed. This isn't actually touching the floor. It should be. It's going to elongate that a bit there. I also just noticed this thing isn't even lined up with this properly. Damn. Um, easy fix, though, for the moment. I haven't gotten too crazy with it yet. Alright, it's on this side. Alright, and then we'll just modify this one. Okay. Now. That's going into that now. I need to make this a bit deeper. I'll save that for uh, later, though. For the moment, though, let's actually just go ahead and move these. Oops. So I can work on this, though, having to worry about that. And this, too. Alright, so. Now you're probably watching me do this morning, what the hell is he doing? But, uh, you'll see. Actually, I should probably make this a bit bigger. It's got to accommodate a uh, model that'll be going in there later on. Or rather, I'm at this one. Well, both of them have to. Alright, so... Instead of just trying to recreate that there, let's just copy it over. Flip vertically, there we go. Alright, so that goes on top of this, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, on top of that. Okay. So now we'll take these and run these down the entire length. And what's going to happen is, is that in these, we're actually going to be putting um, light entities so we can shine light on this thing and illuminate it. Okay, now we want to uh, bring these up to the top.
Go back over here real quick. Wow, what's going on here? Okay, so that's not, this is centered, but then everything else goes out of whack. What did I do to this thing? That's probably because they're not on the grid. That's why. Everything is moving along with its own uh, section by its own. Another thing I had to worry about with vertex editing is knocking things out of alignment. Again, I know you're having one of those WTF moments, but just hang on. You'll see what's going to happen. Again, I'll have to, um... Go back through and uh, fix things up a bit. So that it looks proper. Alright, now I'll take all these and we'll lower them down a bit. Hmm. Doesn't really look that combine-y, if you know what I mean. Maybe we'll just do this. I got enough points so we can just modify what we need to there. Now that'll invalidate it. Another thing you gotta worry about is invalidating things. Ah, uh, screw it for now. I'll just flatten it out. Figure it out later. This is generally how I map, though. I just keep uh, doing things until I find something that triggers an idea. And then I run with it until I uh, decide that it looks good. It's actually produced some pretty interesting stuff. Mapping without a plan. Many people would tell you you're crazy and not to do that, but at the same time, no plan means there's room for modification. Even if it takes five times as long to make a map that way. Alright, so we've got these, we've got those, and what we'll do is we'll just take this. And move it over to here. Line it up. And 
And then we have our uh, shelf here. And what I'll do is I'll take um, like an object, uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to go prop static. I think we'll do brain like because those are a lot easier to work with. Uh, let's see. Brain light apply. And what we'll do is, is we'll take it and uh, angle it in. So up, rotate it, just like that. Oh, let's wait a second. I want to put a. Uh, light spot on there too, so we'll have to try and let's see, move them separately here. So the problem with this is that it's going to have to be at exactly the spot up above when it uh, gets up there. So that way um, we can actually move it or actually make the illusion of it moving. Um, so in other words, this would go up. This would be off at the moment. It would be up here somewhere. This would go up. And then once this lines up, it would go on to give the appearance that once this finishes moving, this will turn on. So it's like uh, giving it power or something like that. Give that kind of an illusion. Of course, then we have to name them too. That'll be easier because we can name all the lights the same thing. Uh, but for color... Um, Go ahead and do a combine type of color here. Add custom. Control C, Control V. Or actually, we just leave a negative one. And 200. If you put negative one there, it'll take the values from brightness. Um. Flags initially dark. We'll name this uh, Armory Light. Whoops. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and adjust this a bit. Well, we'll do that after we move it over here. Make sure we have it centered before we actually move it, so we don't have to try and edit, uh, change it. Actually, that's about center there. Just trying to change things after you've uh, done this to them. It makes it really uh, difficult to do anything with them. Alright, so... Uh, see, that's too much. 